Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new series that I'm starting called Fun Algorithms for Swift. So for those of you that are new to programming in Swift and maybe if you're coming from a different background such as Java, this video is gonna be really helpful as kind of a challenge to implement a simple problem or a simple solution for an algorithm in Swift. So today we are going to be talking about the FizzBuzz algorithm. So what is FizzBuzz? Well, let me tell you right after I create my playground project inside of Xcode. So let's go into Xcode here. And on my screen, I have the Xcode little template project here. I'm gonna click here, get started with a playground. And I'm just gonna call this FizzBuzz like so. And just create somewhere in your computer this project here. So I'm gonna expand this fully to the right like that, give myself a little bit of room to work with. And instead of a playground, the uh, variables that you declare are actually printed out to the right. So it's really easy to see what's going on. <clears throat> now back to the FizzBuzz algorithm. So what exactly is FizzBuzz? Now this is a very common uh, problem that is asked during an interview question. And the actual question is this. So imagine you have a series of numbers that are in sequential order, starting from perhaps one, and you go up to a number like 10. So if you're starting from one, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and FizzBuzz is uh, going to do this. For any number that is divisible by three, uh, you print out the word fizz. If it's divisible by five, for example, five, <laughs> you print out the word buzz. And finally, if you are divisible by both a three and five, you print out FizzBuzz. So uh, hopefully not too confusing. And the example from one to 15 will be one, two, fizz, four, buzz, and then fizz, and then seven, eight, fizz, and then so on and so forth until you hit 15, and that will be FizzBuzz. So I'm gonna go ahead and type out a line of code here, and I'm going to let numbers equal uh, just one, two, three, four, <laughs> five. So in this series of numbers, we have one fizz, which is three, and then one buzz, and that is five. Now, how do I implement this actual algorithm to print out fizz and buzz for three and five? Well, the way uh, we want to do this is to iterate through all of the numbers in this array with a for loop like this. So let's do for num in numbers like that. And if we just print out num, we get uh, five numbers that are being printed out right here. Now, how do we actually get the console to show that? Well, let's bring it up right here. By clicking this uh, top right button here, it shows this debug area. And down here, we get the actual print statements that it's, it's uh, inside of this for loop. Now, the way I wanna check if a number is divisible by three, is to use this operator called a modulus. So if I do if uh, num, so if num modulo three is equal zero, so equal equals zero, we print out uh, this string here called fizz. And just to make it clear exactly what it is, I'll use this string interpolation uh, syntax here. And that gives me, let's see, get rid of that and get rid of that. And here we go. So we get uh, one, two, three, and three fizz, and three, four, five. So let's get rid of this extra three here by using an else case and print out the final number like so. So now we get one, two, three fizz, and four, five. Now we're going to use the exact same technique to detect if a number is also divisible by five. And we're going to do that right here. So else if num is modulo let's see modulo five equal equals zero we print out this uh, num here and we print out buzz so let's get rid of this last brace and then let it just run the code down here and let's see let me pull it up here okay we get one two three fizz four and five buzz so that's pretty straightforward and pretty easy now i want to actually introduce uh, the numbers up to 15 so I can actually print out fizzbuzz because 15 is divisible by 3 and also divisible by 5. So let me just quickly type out the numbers here. So 13, 14, 15. 
and let it just run the actual algorithm. So notice how 15 says fizz, but it should actually say fizz buzz. Now, the reason why it's saying fizz and not buzz is because it enters this if section and just prints out this fizz. Now, uh, one common mistake that I see some of my students uh, actually make in this example is they introduce this uh, divisible by three and divisible by, let's see, divisible by five equals zero. Let's see, I gotta fix that, equals zero. And here is what they do. They print out the num here, fizz buzz. So uh, introducing this if statement below the division of three and the uh, modulo of five actually does not execute because it falls inside of this section before it hits this if statement. So the proper way of doing this is to take this if out, put it up here, and do, let's see, brace, else, and bring that if statement right there. And let's get rid of this. And there we go. So the moment we put the uh, modulo three up here and the modulo five uh, equals zero, we can just print out the fizz buzz uh, for 15 immediately after we encounter that number. So pretty straightforward. And one more thing that we want to um, do uh, want to actually improve is this if check at line 18. Um, this is a little subtle, well, maybe not too subtle, but you can actually check if a number is divisible by three and five by simply uh, modul uh, dividing by three times five. So the product of those two numbers. And what I mean is if we just check if modulo of 15 is zero, we are uh, we're pretty much all the way there with the if check. So we reduce the if checks by one and we just divide by 15 instead of three and five. So pretty good. And let's see, what else do I wanna do here? I want to actually do this. So imagine if I have a larger number of, uh, I guess if numbers included more than 15, I wanna actually see all of the numbers up to like a thousand, right? So I, want to do up to a thousand, so a thousand like that, but we can't create an array by simply doing the dot, dot, dot. So I want to actually show you how to create an array of 1,000 numbers. So uh, 1,000, let's see if I can type this out, 1,000 numbers, starting from one, and this is going to be an int array like that. I'm gonna create this array by doing a loop. So let's do for uh, i in one dot 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 1000, uh, perhaps 100. Let's see if 1000 works. So 1000. And here's what we're going to do 1000. Let's see this variable here dot append i. And then we get 1000 numbers here. And instead of this uh, numbers inside of this for loop, We'll just use the 1,000 numbers. And then if we just wait for it to print out, we get 1,000 numbers instead of just the 1 through 15 inside of this array here. So if I drag all the way up, you see the entire list of numbers. And this is how you would actually create a, an array of numbers just based on a very simple for loop right here. So this is kind of different compared to other languages like C or Java. And the syntax is simpler and more straightforward compared to the standard uh, for loop. And yeah, that's it. Hopefully you liked this little simple algorithm and you were able to pick up some of the new syntax that Swift allows you to take advantage of. And yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Make sure to hit subscribe if you want to get a notification for the next algorithm that I'll be going uh, over in the next couple of days. All right, thanks. Have a good day. Bye.